Hi guys, in the last video we created this initial Rust program and we had a variable uh, which is in this was in this case uh, an integer 64 placed it to 28 and then we printed it out using this placeholder here and inserting that age into the println macro. Now let's let's try something and let's go and say you know what um, I'm changing my age to uh, 32 and let's see what happens let's save that and then let's go in the terminal here and run it Oops. and we should get an error So and as we see, it now uh, got an error, and the error is here. And the reason why this error is taking place, because every time in Rust, when you declare a variable, this variable is immutable. That means it cannot be changed. And what I did here, I, I, I gave my variable initially a value of 28, and then I changed it to 32. This is not allowed. Now, how can I change the value of my variable? Well, I would have to declare it differently. I would have to declare it as a mutable uh, variable, and that would be at mute, my age mute. And now this variable is allowed to mutate or to be mutable or to change. And if I save that and run it, you'll see I will then have no errors. Because now what we've done, we've created a mutable uh, uh, variable, and that means we can change it anytime we want. And that's the difference between um, Rust and other languages, here, if you declare a variable the way we did previously without the mute uh, word, th that variable would be uh, unchangeable, you cannot change it. And if you need to uh, uh, have a variable which you want to continuously change, well, then you have to proactively insert the mute uh, keyword in there. Now, let's run our program again. Cargo run. And that should run without any any problems. So and there we have it. Now it just prints out that I'm 32 years old after changing that. So that's that's one thing you gotta pay attention to. Now here, obviously, also see that we're getting a warning here. The warning is because I never used the 28. If I if I had used the 28, then that warning would not be here. Let's try it out. And if I just say now. Uh, I guess my age yet, yeah. and then I've changed my age, so I would have, and now that warning should be gone. And because I used my age, or that value 28 has been used in here, and uh, once we compile that, that, that warning should also be uh, gone. So you see here now um, the warning is gone and we're compiling pretty good. And now, first of all, we're printing the 28 and then the 32. Right. So that's uh, one thing. Now, uh, another question is what are the types that we got in or the numeric types for uh, Rust? And I found a link for you. And I'll post this link in the in description below. And that's basically the types you have. You have unsigned types, 8-bit, uh, 16-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit, and 128-bit. And unsigned means that these, um, that these numbers cannot have negative values. And obviously, they go from 0 to you know, whatever value is here. Then you have the signed variables, uh, these, uh, this, sorry, the signed integers. And these are, again, i, 8, 16, and so on. And uh, uh, unlike the unsigned ones, they just go up to nearly half of these. And uh, obviously, in this case, they can handle uh, negative numbers. And then you'd have for floats, you just have uh, basically floats or uh, decimal numbers. You'd have F32 and F64. That's about it. So basically easy to remember. I mean, uh, I is for integers. Unsigned is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is you and f is uh, is float and for f you have just 32 and 64 right so uh, now we've uh, we've uh, 
we've done our first program, we've done our variable. Now let's try some input, user input, and let's, uh, let's have the age input by the user. So uh, let's modify that a bit here. So let's first of have a print learn and uh, please input your age. Okay, and then, now what we have, we need to um, enable the user to uh, input his age. To do that, we need to insert or get a package, uh, which is, which is uh, not in, the, in that uh, core package that we're using. And, and to get packages in Python, you would use import, uh, so and so on, in C, you would use include, and here you would use use, the word use, and then what we need is std, and then std is the, is the, is the package, and then the sub package would be uh, io, and that's it. it for, it's basically like in C, you know, um, include standard io, and sort of basically the same principle. And now, uh, what we want, we want to modify the age, um, Let's let's define that variable here. Uh, let um, user age. Uh, sorry. Let user age. Um, and of course, we have to. It has to be mutable. So because the user is going to change it, uh, user age. Um, Equal and now we're just having uh, we, we need a new string. Uh, this is going to be a string uh, object, and so basically it's going to be string uh, new. So basically, what we done we just created a new string object, and the details of these, like with the macros, what I mentioned last video, I'm going to explain further down the line. Let's keep it now simple, and. So now, uh, I don't need that, or let me, yeah, I don't need that at all. And to comment is basically like in, uh, in, in C or C++, you have these double, um, you know, double slashes. And just let me comment that stuff out, I don't need it right now. And boom. Right. So we have, we have declared the variable where, uh, which was going to take in the user input, and now, um, what we have, we're going to enable or program it so that it reads the line and that would be IO standard standard in. So we're basically using this IO standard in function and you should read line and that, 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 uh, that, that, that function read line is basically taking in a reference, similar like in C, uh, a reference of the mutable uh, uh, user age, sorry, user age, and now here is another thing. What you have to um, to do with uh, uh, with with Rust is you also have to uh, pre-program uh, the sort of uh, uh, exception message or. Um, um, you know, the, the error message, and that gets done with expect, and then in case, in case something goes wrong, uh, no age was read. That's the message that comes uh, in case, uh, you know, something, some error takes place and it wasn't possible to, to, um, to read the age. Now, uh, similar like in JavaScript, you can also, if that's too long for you, you can also um, sort of... Uh, put it in, in uh, different lines. Right, so now what we can do, let me, do, let me take that off, just kind of confuse us, and this, and now we can just say, hello, I am, and then I will say user age. So now, in contrast to our previous program, in this case, the user is inputting the age and not uh, not us, right? Have I done everything right? So right, 
Okay, great. So let's save it and let's run it. And obviously, such a program, uh, such a, when you run such an application, you cannot run it uh, with, with output because in this case, it demands a user input and you cannot have any user inputs in here. So uh, such programs which, which are interactive, if you wish, uh, which demand a user input, you'd have to run them uh, via the terminal. And uh, let's go. And basically, I feel that maybe it's just me, but I feel like running it through the terminal, especially such simple programs, uh, is much easier and much faster than uh, going via the output. So let's go cargo run. And that should compile, and then we should be we should get a sort of a, a request for us to uh, input our age. So you see here, it's like asking me to input my age, and then I just put in uh, let's say uh, forty two, and return. And now, hi guy, I'm forty two years old. So basically, that's how uh, we do this thing. And you see here, because I've used read line, uh, what it does is 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 taking a new line. It's inserting the whole input is on a, on a separate line. So that's why I'm having this line break here um, in my output. We'll see then in further videos how to improve that, um, that input to have it all in, in, uh, in one line.